Hi everyone, I'm Ava and today I want to talk to you about nine things that you will find in a Dutch kitchen, but you won't find in an American kitchen. Some of the things I'm going to be talking about are legitimately Dutch things. I didn't even know they existed before I was introduced to Dutch culture or my girlfriend, but now I know they exist. And some of these other things are probably just more common in a Dutch kitchen, but not as common in the US. But I will say that it just, to me, shows that there is a cultural difference because I think the Dutch prioritize different things in their everyday cooking and everyday food habits. Now, before going into the things, I did want to say that because we live in such a global world, I don't want to say that you maybe never find these things in any American household. Number one on this list is a gaskhaf, this little guy. So in the Netherlands, when you buy cheese, you often buy them in these huge blocks huge blocks of cheese. Heaven for me, honestly. So you buy them in these huge blocks and then you need to slice them. Now in the US, when you buy cheese, they're typically already sliced or already in tiny blocks. So you don't need to do anything to them. Or if you do, it's very minimal. You might get these tiny slabs of cheese and then you could just use a cheese knife to cut them. A cheese knife if you're fancy, that's also not very, it's not an extremely common thing to have in a kitchen in the US but you just use a knife and you slice them up and it's pretty easy to do with these small blocks of cheese. But when you are buying these huge things of cheese, you need something else. You need this. You take it and you slice it. Now, I thought it would be relatively easy to use one of these things when I was first introduced to them over Christmas with my girlfriend's family. Turns out I was wrong. I could never get the pressure right. Just beautifully slice a normal slice of cheese. My cheese slices were always a little uneven or a little broken. But hey, over time, I have mastered it. So yeah, this thing is not as common. And also you should know there are two types of gastraf. For those of you who are not familiar with this item, this one is typically used for old cheese because the Dutch have three kinds of cheeses. Old, what they called belege, so semi-old, and young cheese. So for the younger cheeses, you would use a slightly different kind of gastraf, something that looks a little like this. Now. If you notice, the difference is this like little thing over here. And I think that's just because the younger cheese tends to get stuck a little over here. So it's better to use this instead. Number two is a aardappel stomper or a potato masher. In the US, we do mash our potatoes. We have mashed potatoes, most famously over Thanksgiving. But surprisingly, this item from my experience isn't very common in an American kitchen. I think we just use a fork or something to mash our potatoes. But a aardappel stomper is a Dutch kitchen staple. The Netherlands is the land of the cheese, but also the land of the potatoes and the potato eaters. The Dutch love their potatoes and they like their food mashed. So this item makes total sense here in the Netherlands. Moving on to number three. Now this one is really very typically Dutch and it is a pan. Bofferchers, I think the best way I can describe them are these little mini pancakes. And in order to make these little mini pancakes, you need to have a pan with several little holes in them. I wouldn't have even imagined such a thing to exist because of course we don't eat bofferchers in the US. So I couldn't imagine that you would need to make them in something. I mean, of course you could make them separately, but I think that would be a lot more difficult. So the clever Dutch have this bofferchers pan that they use. And the first time I actually encountered a pofferches bun was when I was taking a Dutch class in the US and my Dutch instructor wanted to make them for us. So we went to someone's home and he very nicely used this pofferches bun to make pofferches for us. So this is a cute little item a Dutch person might have in their kitchen if they would like to make pofferches. And why wouldn't you like to make pofferches? Number four. I'm gonna call number four a manlander. This item has been in my kitchen for ages months and I've never used it because I couldn't figure out what it did. My partner, who is like my Dutch cultural reference for all of these things, calls it a manlander. Apparently that's not what this item is called, but what would I know? Because I didn't even know what it did until very, very recently. And this was in my kitchen. I had never seen anything like this in the US. I'm talking about this guy. Like I said, it looks like a lunar lander. Now what it actually is, is a grater or a slicer. Um, I didn't know that, but because we just don't have a grater or a slicer that looks like this in the US. And again, to reiterate, it's not that we don't have things to grate or slice. We also have graters and slicers in the US where you have to move the handle manually, 
but I just never seen one that looks like a lunar lander. So this one is on the list because it's just so unique looking. Moving right along to number five, a weighing scale. I feel like this is a great example that allows us to see the differences between the US and the Netherlands. Normally speaking, you would never have a weighing scale in your kitchen because we tend to use cups. Here in the Netherlands, you measure things to the gram. I have seen my girlfriend use our weighing scale. First of all, she insisted we buy a weighing scale. And then when we bake, we went from, oh, hey, we're gonna throw in a cup of this, two cups of that, maybe half a cup of this, to, okay, was it 183 grams or 182? And then we like have to measure it to make sure it's precisely right. I am just not used to baking that way or cooking that way. I use cups. That's what I'm used to. I even brought my cups from the US with me because I just cannot get used to this precise measurements. I mean, we spend so much time over like one or two grams and she, on the other hand, gets really frustrated because a cup isn't very precise. You could decide how much you wanna fill up that cup. Do you leave the rim a little empty? Do you fill it up all the way? Is it a heaping cup? Is it a slightly less cup? So she was always really frustrated. She's like, I don't know how much we're putting in our food. Whereas for me, it's all relative. So a weighing scale is not something you will find in an American kitchen. We use cups and spoons. That's how we do it. Number six. Flesseliger. This name cracks me up. Literally translated, it means bottle liquor. When I first saw that, I thought to myself, what in the world could that be? And then I saw what it looked like. And I was like, what is this? Is it a rubber hammer for children? But then why is it called a bottle liquor? Well, it turns out the name actually makes a lot of sense when you discover that it is a spatula that you use in order to get stuff out of a bottle. Because if you wanna get stuff out of like a pan or a bowl, a large bowl, you will use a different kind of spatula. So they just happen to have two kinds of spatulas here. And I didn't know that because in the US we have the one shape. Number seven is a tea saucer type thing. So I'm not talking about what you would put your teacup on, like a cup and saucer, that kind of saucer, but in the Netherlands, first of all, people drink a lot of tea. We of course drink tea in the US but not as much as I've noticed Dutch people drinking tea. I feel like drinking tea in the evening time is very much part of Dutch culture, I would say. It's something that I really noticed my partner, her family, and her friends do. I also noticed that every time they made tea or they brought out tea, they would also bring out this one other thing that I never used in the US, and that is this thing over here. This is a, well, a tiny little bowl where you would put your tea bags after you're done with them. I mean, it makes total sense. I don't know why I haven't used one of these in the US, but it's just not part of our kitchen. We are so uncivilized. We simply leave our tea bags in there. Or even worse, we take it and we dangle it over the trash can and we dump it right in. It's, it gets kind of messy. So when I discovered this, my life got a little better, a little cleaner. So this is definitely one of those things that I eventually found in some hip shops in the US. Once I you know, was acquainted with this on my trips to the Netherlands, I, I bought one because I found that I couldn't live without it anymore. So this not common in the US. It might exist, but it's not common in the US. Number eight is gourmetta. I hope I said that right. I keep wanting to say gourmetta, but I think that's very American. So this is a typical Dutch thing. And last Christmas, I was acquainted with this typical Dutch thing. What it is, is a hot surface and basically a indoor barbecuing, grilling type kit that people like to bring out on special occasions like Christmas. And I think especially it's a Christmas thing from what I've been told. So over Christmas, they bring out this set and everyone sits around the table and grills little vegetables or some meat. And it's a nice little activity where you grill your food together and you eat it together. How cute is that? This reminds me of cheese fondue where you also get together and you, you know, dip your bread in the melting cheese and it's kind of like an activity along with your food. So this is similar in that way. So I can totally see how this is part of the, we wanna do stuff with our food and it's a nice together activity as opposed to just eating it. Number nine, bread caskets. Ava, do you mean bread basket? No, I do not mean bread basket. I mean bread casket or bread coffin, a bread box. 
I think these things are so adorable. And actually, they make a lot of sense. So in the US, we like to put our bread in bread baskets. If you are someone who eats a lot of bread in a family or something, that is something you might have, even though it is quite fancy. So I wouldn't exactly say it's a normal thing to have in your house, a bread basket in the US. But here in the Netherlands, it is very normal to have a box for your bread. And it makes total sense because it keeps your bread fresh longer because you're actually covering it. And these boxes often tend to be really, really cute really antique, really stylish. Like, I really like these things. The first time I was introduced to them, I was like, this is awesome. I mean, look how cute. Of course you'd want a bread casket for your bread. Well, the bread here is way better than bread in the US and you would want to keep it fresh longer. So why wouldn't you just have one of these things? I think in the US, the bread is not that good to begin with. So I guess we prioritize showcasing our bread on a basket as opposed to actually trying to keep it fresh. That was a joke. Did not mean that. The bread here is better, but I don't think Americans are that superficial. So if a Dutch person doesn't want to put their bread in the freezer, they may choose to put it in a bread box or bread casket. So those are some things that I noticed were very typical in a Dutch kitchen or more common in a Dutch kitchen, but just not that common in an American kitchen. So for those of you watching this, if you are Dutch, what are some things in your kitchen that you think are typically Dutch? Let me know in the comments. And if you're watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that button. It's a nice, easy way to get notified when I post a new video.